I know. This is old Kim. And this is not a spring chick. And one of the things that you always expect from us, and we always love to bring to you, is information about all the different holidays. And yeah. today we're going to be talking about New Year's. And once again, as it has been this past year, everything that we do is all off of new information. So, which is, most of it actually just came about a half hour, actually about an hour ago we dragged it up. So, but uh, basically what it is, is New Year's Day is observed on January the 1st, the first day of the year on the modern Gregorian calendar as well as the Julian calendar used in ancient Rome. Uh, basically, Jan January 1st on the Julian calendar currently corresponds to January 14th on the Gregorian calendar. It is on that date that followers of some of the Eastern Orthodox religions celebrate the New Year. That's why Christmas is set at a different time too, folks. So. Uh, so, you know, everybody, I think around the world celebrates New Year's on the same day, except for, actually, there's Chinese New Year's. The Chinese New Year's. Which, I think they just celebrate both times. But, no, they do. I mean, you, okay, yeah, if you're able to watch Asian television in your community on cable or something, you'll find out that they have great, big, god-awful Chinese celebrations for New Year's and Japanese celebrations. It's the only time of the year you can ever hear anything decent music, folks. I mean... To uh, be honest, I, I, I love to watch the Japanese channels because there's one, they, they, they got the most beautiful orchestrations you can ever hear. The people can't sing with a darn. And then at the end of the show, they, they basically surprise you. These guys that can't sing a note go, the whole, all of them together are singing like, where the hell did those voices come from? Yeah, but they, uh, it's just basically, it's a universally, the Russians are celebrating Chinese, the Russians are celebrating, even though they they're Greek Chinese. Orthodox, they will celebrate on the, they'll celebrate both times, January 1st and the 14th. Ah. So, which becomes, it's a, it's a good time to eat, drink, and be merry. Ah. Um, basically, I love it, I love it. Uh, Roman dedicated this day to Janus, the god of gates, doors, and beginnings. Janus is like January, That's right. right. In honor of life and... And the, the new rationalized calendar, it, it, um, Janice has two faces, one looking forward and the other backwards. Uh, Is they, that why at, at the beginning of the new year, we everybody talks about New Year's resolutions? Yeah. And then they look back at... They look backwards. I mean, it, it basically, I never, I hate looking backwards because it remembers how miserable things are. I have really bad Christmases, folks. But um, uh, basically, it's, it's, it's thought that it may be based on pagan traditions. <gasps> Oh Isn't it amazing God. that virtually every single holiday on the books is based on pagan traditions? Oh my gosh. Yeah, you know, eat, well, drink, you know, and be married. It's not a, January 1st for New Year's, it's not a religious celebration. No, it's the start of a... It's a party celebration. Yeah, and it's, I mean, the American Indians, my mother is an Indian, on, you know, I'm actually my mother, my, I have grandparents on both sides of the family of Indians. They would celebrate it also, but it's, uh, it's for a different reason. Because they would celebrate the that the new year will be better than the last year. That's it's always the, the optimism. It's the optimism. They always felt that you know you celebrate the new year to bring in the new year because no matter how bad last year was, new the new year will be better. <laughs> but um, among the seventh century pagans of Flanders and the Netherlands, it was a custom to change gifts at New Year's. Which basically, actually, I know about that too. That's the same thing as you get. It's called party favors today. Oh, yeah, well, that works. Yeah, uh, I, I love it. Um, I can't read that one. I see little figures. Uh, do not the uh, basically Saint Iglis, who warned Fleming, the Fleming and the Dutchman, do not make vestulous little figures of the old woman. Little dear are idols or set up, set tables. For the house elf compared to puck at night for exchange, New Year's gifts are supplies of superior strengths and another your custom. <laughs> the quote is from Vita of Iglis, written by the companion of Owen. Basically, it's telling you, it's the church telling you, don't be naughty. And, and, oh. Um, yeah. Isn't that a good one? I like that one. This is all new stuff. I mean, it's amazing. So, most countries in Western Europe they officially adopted January 1st as New Year's Day, somewhat before they adopted the Gregorian calendar. Actually, that one's kind of interesting. So, why in the world did they do that? Um, <laughs> well, they did because it, because um, it, it basically has to do with figure out how many days oh um, from Christmas after Christmas um, 
And, and it all has to do with everything is after Christmas. You know, after Dominion, A.D. A.D. So. Um, and in England, the Feast of the Annunciation on March 25th was the first day of the New Year until the adoption of the Gregorian calendar in 1752. Um, the March 25th date was known as the Annunciation style, and the January 1st date was known as Circumcision style. Yeah. Because this, this was the date of the Feast of the Circumcision, being the eighth day counting from December 25th when Christmas believed, Christ was believed to be born. So like you said, it was all had to do with yeah, Christmas. Christmas. It's all had to do with that thing on Christmas. And this day was the day that Christ was christened yeah. Um, yeah. by Pope Gregory as he, um, as he designed the lit liturgical calendar. Yeah, yeah. circumcision, folks. I know, the Feast of Circumcision. And I think, you know, March 25th is probably the date chosen because it, it's springtime, right? It's springtime. So springtime is the of beginning. Time. That was the planting year started. And then they changed it back to the Gregorian calendar, yeah, the with, day of circumcision or the first day. The first day of, so. Mm -hmm. um, basically, in cultures which traditionally are currently used calendars as a yeah. Gregorian. You know what I just realized? What? Remember they always talk about um, it's, it takes seven days to create the world. This is one of the biblical things, right? Yeah. It's eighth, so it's the day after. Because remember, the last day was the day of rest. Yeah. So the eighth day would be the new beginning. Yeah. So. What are, you know, and I don't know if that has anything to do with it, um, but it seems to make sense if you look at history. Yeah, like I said, we were talking about this. People basically cross match calendars because mm -hmm. nothing talk. You know, they'll have more than one New Year's celebration. Like, well, yeah, because we celebrate New Year's Day, and then we also celebrate Chinese New Year. Um, which is celebrated in, well, a lot of countries, around, at least in China. And we celebrate it because it's always oh, fun for more celebrations. Yeah, and uh, also you, we have a, we have the cross-purpose in this country. We do not really celebrate New Year's Day on Sunday in this country. Oh, just like the Rose Parade this year. Because it's a religious day. Here the trick is, um, there for a god awful long time, this country was not legal to drink on on, on, on the holy day, so therefore you would move it over to the next day so you could have your new, so New Year's celebration can be the 31st or it can be New Year's Day itself, mm -hmm. which is funny, but they say, well, isn't drinking on January the 1st on a Sunday the same as having the party? Well, no, because after you've been to church, they really don't give a darn what you've done. They just want to get you to church. They want to get you to church. If you're drinking on Saturday night, you don't come to church on Sunday morning. So it's a, it, was a, it was a church thing, so. So for Chinese New Year, it's the first day of the lunar calendar and it's corrected for the solar for every three years, which is why sometimes, like Chinese, like J the regular New Year's is always January 1st, but Chinese New Year's changes every single year. And so, like they say, the holiday normally falls between January 20th and February 20th. It gives them a whole month. Yeah. And most of the Asians I know, they just celebrate a month anyway. <laughs> Um, and it's celebrated with plenty of good food, family, lucky red envelopes. Yes, those little red envelopes. I learned how to say Happy New Year's because they have money in them. Um, firecrackers, um, lion and dragon dances. Now the firecrackers for Chinese history is that you throw off the firecrackers and it's to get rid of the evil spirits so you have a good new year. Yeah, and the Chinese, the, the Asians are the only people in the United States that are basically legally allowed to throw this stuff. That's what my dad always told me. He said yeah. if anybody complains, then I'll your heritage. That's right, because they are allowed to, I mean, you're not, okay, if you do this stuff on New Year's Day and you're a Caucasian, they'll hang your butt. But if you're a, you're an Asian and you celebrate Chinese New Year's at one of these, a Chinese, uh, at, a, at, a, at a Chinese New Year's event, they throw firecrackers all, all over the, the place. place. I mean, everywhere. You don't see a lot of horses in Chinese parades. <laughs> yeah. <up> <laughs> yeah, you ever notice that? But the Hindu New Year um, is a little bit different. Yeah, hey, look, it's normally on April thirteenth or fourteenth, depending upon leap year. It's so uh, it celebrates children by paying respect to their parents and other elders and seeking their blessings. I don't think that celebrates children. 
Now, I think that is a good wish. You celebrate children by by worshiping their by worshiping their parents. That that's not how that works. You know, if you ask any child, that does not compute. That's not what they do. <laughs> you now, celebrate children by spoiling the children, not by celebrating the parents. Okay, even okay. Uh, here's the way it works: is my family is part Jewish and part, you know. Uh, Christian and the, the, the Jewish people do celebrate their children, you know, by the, everybody comes and gives gifts to the children on, you know, um, when, you know, the day I am a man or the girls get their own special things. You don't see the kids saying, okay, dad, here's five bucks, go to the movies on me. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen. No. That doesn't happen in any, I mean, the Indies, I, I'd love to see, you know, the, the, you know, the Indian child going up to his father said, I know that I have been a bad boy all year long, but I know you respect me and you want to do this and do that. Here is a thousand dollars, Dad, because I know you love me. So here's a thousand dollars of my hard-earned money for just for you on this day that you're celebrating me. Mm -hmm. I don't think you'll ever hear an Indian kid say that. Never going to happen. I don't think so. Didn't happen when they started this. Mm -hmm. Like the little kids say. Yeah. Okay. The, 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 the unique thing about children is that children are the same everywhere in the world. It doesn't make any difference whether they're in a, a communist society, they're in a Christian society, a Jewish society. You can put kids in a room together, the kids are all the same. Mm -hmm. They're all out to get their parents. <laughs> yeah. What can we do to screw mommy and daddy today? Oh, no, what would that would be for? Yeah, and they don't even have to be able to speak. They just sit there. <laughs> watch, them, watch the kids in a room together. I mean, uh, I was on, I was on, um, uh, I worked on a show um, a zillion years ago um, with, you know, Art Linkler's house party. And they put kids together in a room that couldn't speak. They were, they were just babies. They'd go around, uh, and, then, and then they'd sit there, what are these kids doing? And then one of the parents said, they're conspiring. I know conspiracy when I see it. Kids couldn't speak English, but they're all sitting together. Uh, and then, you know, like, like uh, you know, the kids are all getting the same idea from one another. Mm -hmm. Couldn't speak a word, and yet they're conspiring, so. Mm -hmm. And I, that's why I like children. I don't like, right, okay. And here's another one. It's beginning on of the year in the Iranian calendar. Which yeah. actually, we never had that information before. Okay, um, no, it didn't, because most people don't understand that Iran used to be Persia. Mm. Persia was where a lot of this stuff, you know, Mesopotamia and all those mm -hmm. those things. They we owe an awful lot to the Persian Empire. Uh, one of the things I think we owe to the Persian Empire is, is algebra, well, geometry, trigonometry. Really? Well, people forget that Iran is part of Persia, was Persia, right? Yeah. And I they don't, you don't think about remember, it. Remember, I have never seen a, 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 a tree as beautiful as a rose. Mm. And have a da 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 da. da just long as the is odd. Persia. We owe a lot to Persia. So for the Iranian calendar, it's celebrated on the first day of the astronomical vernal equinox, which usually occurs on March 21st or the previous following day, depending on where it is observed. Yeah, and, and they do. Uh, okay, the Iranians are a, a weird type of country, what? is that they do celebrate these days. I mean, it's supposedly a strictly, a strictly cellular country that celebrates these events. Mm -hmm. They have great big god awful huge parties. Well, and it's not just there because they've been celebrating for over three thousand years, but it also extends um, to Central Asia, South Asia, Northwestern China, Crimea, and some groups in the Balkans. Because the Persian Empire was god awful big at one time, and they spread their okay. There is one unanimous thing that all societies have together. They'll adopt somebody else's holiday and answer. It. If you think, well, God, just think, you know, like they're partying, then they can party then, okay. Yeah, how do you know of how many Jewish people celebrate Hanukkah and Christmas? Every one of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, like, uh, you go to a room, you know, uh, when I was little. Um, you Isn't know, there always a reason for celebration? In fact, with his Kwanzaa. <laughs> uh, I, I remember when I was, uh, I was, um, I was at uh, Beverly Hills High and the teacher, okay, how many children in this room will be celebrating Hanukkah? And he go, how many in this room will be celebrating Christmas? They said, how many of these people in this room are, are Jews? And then, 
<laughs> it came from a Hollywood community, folks. The kids celebrated every holiday you could. Well, because what happens is you got off. Mm -hmm. They said, well, you so as kids, you learn to celebrate all the holidays. You learn to celebrate every holiday you can celebrate because the kids on Hanukkah got to go split. <laughs> oh, actually, people probably do that in the workplace, too. Yeah, they do it. My father, they knew my father wasn't Jewish. And they said, okay, you know, uh, you know, they said, okay, we, okay, you're going to be celebrating Hanukkah with uh, your family this year, aren't you? So we won't, you won't be available. My father said, well, I'm available for any overtime work that would occur during this time. I said, yeah, we know, you know, if you're willing to...